and the award for oblivious parents goes to most be all dads really but mancorns and hong's dad today especially in episode four let's get into it the episode starts with mancorn upset at his dad's obvious attempts to marry him off but no worries his would-be wife has more sense than dear old dad and bought him a rainbow kite to fly around so that hopefully his parents can catch the drift before Mancorn even has to say anything. There's trouble in paradise for Yai as well. We get some lovely sibling bonding as Sis reminds Yai his mom is gone and his dad has moved on. How main character of them. We get a glimpse of humanity as his sister reminds Yai that people need to move on and allow themselves to feel Cut to a jealous Yai in the midst of missing Mancorn hours. He's still oblivious, but even my himbo duo can tell that Yai has feelings big time. They break my heart by confirming that they aren't a couple, but they do so in their matching pink and blue aesthetics, so I won't take their word too seriously yet. I actually feel so bad for Yai this episode. He's just so lonely and so very down bad for Mangcorn already. I really want Mangcorn to just text the dude back, even though I know he's going through it. Good thing BLs have been getting on the awesome mom's train lately and gave Mangcorn one. He doesn't need any more reasons to be broody. I want the comedy back, please. But no, misunderstanding time. On his way back from the worst dinner of all time, he runs into Yai, and I sigh heavily in hopes this doesn't last all episode. But my man Mangcorn is kind of a stalker too, and steals Yai away again, two episodes in a row, to explain himself. It's cute, and I'm happy I don't have to deal with the misunderstanding. They nearly had me in the first half. Instead, I actually got a genuine laugh out at Yai's fake anger and eager handing over of his phone to get Mangcorn's number, and his not-so-subtle fishing for a relationship status. We love an unsubtle king. The whole sequence was actually really cute, and went miles towards me actually liking both of our mains substantially more. Side note, why are there so many skateboarders in BLs? I didn't know this was a thing outside of 2009. It's cute, and Yai is adorable in his little hoodie, but I do not understand it as a safe zone hobby. That's just me though, and I got over this moment of wonder simply because I like hand-holding moments, and I got one thanks to a skateboarding convo. So thanks for that skateboarding. Also, <laughs> Sure, buddy. Kiss, 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 kiss. Yes! The spiciness is back. It only took the halfway point after the bang that was episode one. Also, did anyone else notice the flash? Was that a subtle hint that a photo was captured? Or am I giving the editors too much credit? for what could have been a mistake. Then Yai ran away. I like to think that Yai didn't know he could like sweet too, and had a lot to process after that kiss. After all, we know he's a bit of a freak in the sheets. To preserve Yai's dignity, I will not show the scene here, but we did get to see that the kiss did truly affect Yai, and I did need to pause to collect my thoughts, as I felt like I shouldn't be the creep in the room with this poor, confused man. I feel for him, but also, just let yourself enjoy things, man. After some timely, shameless car and Gucci advertisements, we get a weird moment with Cherry, who I do not remember, but I do not like either, because the vibes are lacking. Don't come back here to ruin anything, Cherry. You aren't wanted here. We also get introduced to Nine, who is pretty, and I also don't want here, until he makes it clear he has a partner in England, and Big Dragon subverted my worries once again. Or so I had hoped, 
because I'm just now realizing he might only mean business partner and I might be sad again about the misunderstanding moments to come. I hate when PLIs, potential love interests, show up. We're already at the halfway point. Don't do this to me. Way to be a downer, dude. I know he's being nice offering a ride, but go home, dude. Like, back home to England, please. In the rain? Alas, we did not escape the misunderstanding. Big Dragon tricked me and just delayed it a bit. Good on Mangkorn for calling that out. I still don't know how you argue it isn't what it looks like, but Mangkorn isn't actually dating Yai yet, so even though I understand why Yai is angry, I also appreciate feelings being dragged out into the open. Can you tell I hate misunderstandings? <laughs> Duh. And the timing of the rain? Immaculate. Start next episode with a kiss, please. Also, seaweed advertisement aside, Park and Pong need to kiss, and also need to be better at their jobs. We were so close. That was a tease. Time for some awards. My favorite character. Yai did it. Like his quick change in feelings from Ancorn, I have decided to be a little easy with my love, too. That phone moment and the calling Mancorn a jerk really did it for me. Yay on you being cute and jealous all episode. Most memorable moment. Please. Of course it's the kiss. I'm not shameless enough to choose Yai's bedtime shenanigans. Out in the open kisses only, please. MVP. He's still so serious, but Mancorn really is a take no bullshit dude today. Good on you making things clear not once, but three times. One, Hong is a friend. Sure, he's not quite telling the truth, but he also sort of is. Two, Mangkorn is not dealing with a nervous jerk yai and not chasing after him when he acts hot and cold, running off and then trying to make a date later in the episode. And three, once again, yes, call out his feelings out loud and kiss next episode. Overall, episode four is a solid seven out of ten effort. It's better, and I liked it but I still want the funny that was episode two. And I want miscommunication and other love interests to fall into a gutter and die. Happiness and laughs were no eight from me. Bring it, episode five. <laughs>